I surprised myself with the decision to go on a mission. It was kind of a long time in the making, but also um, something that I kind of re like resented for a little while because I kept feeling like maybe it was something I needed to do. But growing up, I had thought like, oh, I'll, I, that's not for me. I'm not going to serve a mission. And then um, it, there was, it was there was one summer where I I came back to school and I just thought like maybe I need to go on a mission. So I met with my bishop and started working on my papers and then just life picked up and it didn't happen. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, you know, whatever. And then the next summer after that, I felt like I needed to talk to my bishop again. And so I did. And it was awesome because it was, it happened to be the same bishop and I'm here in like the Provo singles ward. And he was like, you know, last year when you came, it didn't feel right, but now it feels like you're ready. And so, um, I turned in my papers and it took a little while to get my call and whatever. <laughs> um, but I guess why I decided to go on a mission, um, besides that I felt like the spirit was telling me to, was I really wanted to show to people that you can be intellectual and Mormon at the same time. I think a lot of times people think that if you're faithful, it means that you're kind of blind to criticisms about the church or maybe like other opinions that can kind of cast doubt on your faith. And I wanted to show like, you can be aware of those things and still choose God and choose faith. And so that was kind of, that was a big part of my decision to go because I noticed that, um, people around me were kind of losing their faith. And I wanted to be like, no, we can do this. We can be young Mormon intellectuals because I wanted to show that you can be intellectual and faithful at the same time. And so Boston was like the perfect place to get called to, um, like Clayton Christensen is in our mission presidency and he gave, he would come to zone meetings sometimes. I remember him giving a training and he's like known as the smartest person in the world and he's so humble and so faithful. And that was really amazing for me to be able to be up close to role models like that. Um, not only, you know, my leaders in the mission, but also just the members there. There's a lot of people who are really strong in the faith and really, um, really big leaders in society and they're like besides being Mormon or whatever like they have they just have really rich lives and they incorporate the gospel into those lives in a way that's not intimidating to those around them and it's not like preachy but they definitely live the gospel and they um they just do it in a way that really brings the light of Christ into what they're doing. And I just really appreciated that. I've met a lot of people who I look up to, who I think I want to model, I want to model my life after them. I want to be someone who, you know, succeeds in that sense of what the world maybe sees as success, but more importantly, who prioritizes the gospel above everything. And even among that quote, worldly success, the most important thing is going to be my family. And that's what I noticed there. And, um, that's, I think that's one of the amazing things about the people in Boston. Yeah, so when I got my mission call, um, I was really weird about it. <laughs> I didn't want anyone to see me open my call because I was really afraid that I was going to be disappointed with where I was going. Because I know a lot of people, they have like the big family opening and it's recorded and everyone's there and I like, did not want to do that at all. And so I was actually coming home from um, like Thanksgiving break and my, my roommate left my call because she had picked it up from the mailbox and she left my call back in the mailbox, like hid a key for me. So I wouldn't even have to go upstairs to see any of my roommates. So they wouldn't even know I was opening it. Like they knew I was getting it, but I didn't want them to be like speculating. I, it was like kind of paranoid. <laughs> so I grabbed the key. I grabbed like my call. I went straight to my car and I drove up to the Provo temple and it was like, you know, 10 o'clock at night or something. So it was dark. And I was just in the um, parking lot of the temple. And I remember like driving there and I had the call next to me in the car and I was like, just looking at it, like <laughs> my, my call is here. And I, um, just like said a prayer before I opened it and I read it and I was like surprised, but it felt really good. And I was, I was really happy with it. And it was cool because I got called to serve in the Massachusetts Boston mission, which is where my parents met. They both went to school in Boston and it's where my mom joined the church. So, and she always says like, it would have been really hard for her to join the church anywhere except in Boston because of the way that the singles wards there were and like just the culture of Boston. It was really, um, just like the perfect environment for her. And so 
I called my parents and I was like, do you guys want to hear where I'm going? And they were like, yes. So I read it to them and they were just silent for a second. And I was like, I'm happy. And they're like, oh, good. That's all we care about. As long as you're happy. Because I was so worried about getting called somewhere that I didn't want to go. And I will say that because um, there's so much hype around mission calls before you go on a mission because like that's the only thing that you can think about. You don't really know anything else. So you just you turn your papers and you think, where am I going to go on my mission? And that's like all you focus on. And um, it was kind of hard for me because I, I wasn't 19 when I went on my mission. I was 22, but it was right when the age change was happening. So everyone was turning in mission papers and getting mission calls. And I'm an international relations major, so I love to travel. And there are people who are getting called to like really exotic places like Cape Verde and like the Philippines and just all these things. And so after the initial wave of being really excited and feeling the spirit of opening my mission call, I kind of had some like a little bit of just like jealousy about that, I guess. Cause I was like those missions, like I'd really love to go to those other places. And so I just want to say that's a thing that happens, <laughs> but the mission that you go to is like, it's amazing and it's perfect for you. And I'm so grateful that I went to Boston and like, I never could have known when I opened my call, how awesome it would be. But the Lord did give me that initial feeling of joy. And when you doubt that you just need to remember those feelings of confirmation that you do get because they don't always last the whole time, but they will, the Lord will give them to you and it's right.